This presentation will address the physiological adaptations in response to training. It will address the focus question, how does training affect performance? And we'll focus primarily on the following physiological adaptations, resting heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output, oxygen uptake and lung capacity, hemoglobin level, muscle hypertrophy, and the effect of training on fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. Throughout this presentation, you'll be asked to examine the relationship between the principles of training, physiological adaptations, and improved performance. It is important to understand just what is an adaptation. As an athlete applies loads and stress during exercise, the body adapts and functions more efficiently in response. So when we apply the principle of progressive overload, for example, we are applying um, increased loads and stress to the body. The body is then able to adapt or improve as a result. It is important to understand that we often compare untrained athletes with trained athletes. And this is so that we can analyse and determine the physiological adaptations and the effect on performance. There are eight physiological adaptations. Resting heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, hemoglobin levels, oxygen uptake, lung capacity, muscle hypertrophy, and the effect of training on fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. It's important to know that while there is a physiological adaptation to training, there's also a consequence for this physiological adaptation. For example, as a result of training, heart rate decreases. And what this means as a consequence is the heart works less and the cardiovascular system works more efficiently. Likewise, stroke volume increases at rest and in submaximal and maximal exercise. And as a consequence, there is more blood available to working muscles with each beat. It's important to understand that relationship. A closer look at resting heart rate, which is the amount of beats per minute at rest, heart rate decreases as a result of training. And this is because stroke volume and cardiac output actually increase. So resting heart rate is a response to a more efficient and stronger cardiovascular system. The heart muscle improves with training, it actually gets stronger. So when we apply the principle of progressive overload, we actually apply uh, an increased intensity in our training with each training session or with each week, and that actually ap applies a stress or an extra load or intensity to our cardiovascular system. As a result, our cardiovascular system gets stronger, the heart muscle gets stronger, and more blood is able to be pumped out of the left ventricle with each beat, which, re which refers to stroke volume, and can therefore pump more blood out of the heart in one minute, which refers to cardiac output. So this leads to less beats per minute, and that's why resting heart rate decreases as a result of training. This direct relationship allows more oxygen to be delivered to working muscles, and it prolongs peak performance during endurance activities such as marathon and triathlon. A quick look at this graph will show that the trained athlete has a lower resting heart rate, but also has a lower uh, training heart rate as well. Stroke volume refers to the amount of blood ejected from the left ventricle per beat, and cardiac output refers to the blood ejected from the heart per minute. And they're both closely related, and they're also related closely to resting heart rate. So stroke volume actually increases as a result of training, and this is due to the more complete filling of the left ventricle and more forceful contractions that are able to occur when the ventricle is emptying. And again, this is because we apply progressive overload uh, to our aerobic training, and again, the heart rate or the, the heart actually adapts and becomes stronger and is able to force more blood out of the left ventricle. Likewise, cardiac output increases uh, as a result of training, and it's a direct result of the increase in stroke volume, which of course is the amount of blood pumped out of the ventricle per beat. 
So overall, this will lead to more oxygen being delivered to working muscles, and again, it will prolong peak performance during endurance activities such as marathon and triathlon. A quick look at the cardiac cycle shows that the more complete filling of the ventricle allows more blood to enter that ventricle, which, th which then allows more blood to be forced out, and particularly with the thicker myocardium or heart muscle, a more forceful contraction can be delivered, and more oxygen is delivered to working muscles. A quick look at this graph will show that stroke volume um, is actually higher for trained athletes at rest and also higher for trained athletes when training at maximal level. So stroke volume increases as a result of training. Cardiac output, on the other hand, you can see in this graph at rest, the cardiac output is actually similar for the trained and untrained athlete. However, when training at maximal level, the cardiac output for the trained athlete is significantly higher. Again, more oxygen is able to be delivered to those working muscles, improving performance in endurance events. Hemoglobin levels. Hemoglobin, of course, is found in red blood cells. It binds to oxygen and transports the oxygen to the muscles. And hemoglobin actually increases with training. And so this, therefore, increases oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood and as a result of, of training we have an increased amount of blood plasma and also an overall blood volume and this contributes to an increase in red blood cell numbers and so therefore more hemoglobin is available as a result. So this increases oxygen availability and it leads to improved endurance performance. Training at altitude can also increase the amount of hemoglobin available to the athlete in the blood. You can have a look here on this image and you can see that the haemoglobin attaches to the red blood cells and this transports the oxygen. And this graph shows that as altitude increases, the amount of haemoglobin produced by the body also increases. Referring to oxygen uptake, the amount of oxygen utilized by working muscles and referred to as the volume of oxygen that can be used. VO2 max or oxygen uptake increases with training and it indicates a superior oxygen delivery system which contributes significantly to outstanding endurance performance. Oxygen, more oxygen is able to be delivered to working muscles uh, as a result of training. Capillary beds in the muscles increase in size and this leads to a more efficient gas exchange, so more oxygen can actually be delivered and used by those muscles. You can see in this image, you can see that the breakdown of the arteries, arterioles uh, and capillaries, the capillaries of course is where the gas exchange occurs and this contributes uh, considerably to oxygen uptake. The capillaries actually increase in size, improving the efficiency of oxygen delivery. Lung capacity refers to the capacity of air in the lungs. Now, lung capacity itself does not change a great deal as a, as a result of training. However, an increase in strength of the lung muscles and the surrounding tissue leads to greater ventilation, which means the capacity to take in more uh, air and thus oxygen. And there's also an increased amount of capillaries that are available in the alveoli, and this increases the amount of oxygen that can be absorbed. Having a look at this graph here in relation to oxygen uptake, you can clearly see that at rest, oxygen uptake is relatively the same between trained and untrained athletes, but you can see the faster rise as a result of training, that oxygen becomes available much more quickly for um, an, a trained athlete, and they can relate, uh, the trained athlete can release, um, reach the steady state far more quickly. Thank you very much for listening.